Do you like uh, mixing it? I love mixing it. <laughs> Just like take off a piece of chicken. Uh, it's still super hot though. It's like burning my hand. What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from beautiful Tamale, Ghana in northern Ghana. This is the third largest city in the country. One million people live here. Today my boy Isaac is gonna take me on a tour of this entire city. We're gonna go to a tannery. We're gonna see how the leather is made. We're gonna go to a market. We're gonna try some fufu. What else are we gonna do? We're going to see how they make the popular dress called smoke. Smoke. Batakali in the north. That's it? This one. And they also make hats here, right? Yeah. So hats, clothing, and lots of leather, right? So sandals, shoes, you can see everybody here has leather shoes. I see it already, yeah. pretty amazing. Tannery is literally right there. Let's go. Wow, here we go. The leather is drying. This is amazing. Hey, what's up guys? Everything good? Awesome, wow, look at that. So if you guys don't know, this is sheep and goat skin. So this comes from the butcher, yes. then they go through an entire process yeah. and eventually it is dried, right? And this is leather, right here. Look, this guy's doing it right here. So I'm now going to second stage. You can see? Remove it, we call it remover of the hair. So he's like soaking it in this water, which is like a remover. It helps remove all the fur. So once it soaks up enough, then he can take it off exactly. all the fur and then you just have the skin. Exactly. Yeah, change you off the color. Soak the skin inside for two days. Okay, you see, the color is changing. We mix it with water. Our chemical with water. It's a local chemical, which will give us this color, khaki color. We get this color. This is the first color we have. We dry it maybe one, one hour or two, two hours. We apply granite oil. After applying granite oil, we now come to the changing of the skin for the red or black color or wine color. This is the chemical for the red color. We pull it like this, into pieces. We pull it into pieces. Yeah, I'm going to change into color for the red color. The dyeing for the red color. It's a red dye. See? This is black. Wow. This is brown color. So they got red, brown, and black. Yes. And what is he doing here? He's pounding it or yeah. what is he doing? Stretching. Stretching? Yeah. To make it very soft. The process to make leather is a little complex and it takes about a week. Okay, so first they get the skin which they have right here. They let it sit in this like chemical for two days. Then after that he removes all the fur. Yeah. Then from there to dyeing. Yeah. Right? So how long does it take to dye? A few days. Uh, uh, one day. One day. Yeah. And then after that, it goes here. After removing we dry. And then after that they stretch. They stretch. And then after they let it keep drying. And they keep drying. After drying and then we sell it. Perfect. And how many do you do every day? The, a day we use uh, about 100. 100? Yeah. So they make 100 a day? Yeah. 100 pieces of leather? Yeah, 100 pieces. Nice, man. Yeah. So I'm going to go buy some sandals now. Yeah. Some leather. <laughs> Gotta buy. Yeah. Where do you sell to? Local market. To the local? Yeah, we sell it to customers. Our customers, those of you from Accra, Kumasi, Takuradi, Kufredua, Tamale, Bolga, they all came down to Tamale and then they buy. I'm going to make sandals, bags, many things. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're the man. Thank You're the man. man. This is amazing. I've only been to one tannery before. Yeah. In Fez, Morocco. Morocco, yeah. yeah. In Fez. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's like, amazing. blew my mind. Yeah, it's really a mind. Yeah, dude, because it's huge, huge. They have like a million of those yes. with all the colors, all the colors you know? Yeah. So now we are going to the shop to see the various items they made out of these ladies. From shoes, bag. Also belts, no? Also belts, yeah. Belts are good. The He's making the belts? Yeah. Look at the belts right here. So here on the main street is his shop. They started pulling out a bunch of sandals. And these are them, right? Beautiful. So they make them all right here? Yeah. Incredible. And they do a kind of recycling. So okay. the, the base of the shoe is made from the old tire, car tires. No way. Yeah, Look at this, guys. So car tiles is the sole, and uh, this area is all leather. Beautiful. I like the mix of colors, too. And it's very traditional here in Tamale, right? Obviously, yeah. because it's made here, everybody wears sandals. And what do they cost? The price is 
30 CDs for this? 30 CDs, so what is that? Six dollars, right? It's a good deal. And then they have many different styles, right? Different sizes. Are these all for men, women, yeah, mix? Yeah, these, these, these are for men. It's for men. I'm gonna try on a pair of sandals. I think it's my size? It looks like it. Yeah, it's your size. It's like exactly my size. It's like men for me. Yeah, it's your size. Look at this. Yeah. Non-negotiable, 30. But it fits perfectly. What do you think? It's great, right? Like it had to be for me this one. Okay, I'll take it, but let me see if I can buy another one. I mean, it's, it's good, but it's tight. You think it's good? Yeah, it's good and good. All right, so my friends here also brought in some leather wallets. Beautiful. 20 CDs each, huh? They last a long time? I like the black one. This is nice. This coffee, uh, coffee one. Uh, coffee one. Brown. Brown. So 20 CDs. So, so four US dollars for a wallet. This is beautiful too, but this is not... This is not... Snake. This is it from Snake? It's from Snake. Is it? Yeah. I was going to say, it has to be. So the inside is the leather, right? This is from Snake. It's from Snake skin as well. Whoa. So they gave me 10 discount. Okay. So 80 total? Yeah. Okay, okay, we take it. And put the pumps inside. And the pillow? Yeah. You lie down on it, or you sit on it, like this. So that you verify. What's the cost? How much the cost? One is 80. 80 CDs. 80 CDs? Yeah. 120. One, make it, make it 1240. You know, I give you the discount. Even the other one, I do this for you. I take it, I take it. Yeah. I take it. So, so 210, I got three wallets, sandals, and two beautiful beautiful pillows wow this is wholesale if you go to the market he's selling it to the vendor at the market they're gonna add at least 25 to 50 percent on top so buy from him so here in the north when the chief is sitting he has this kind of pillow that he rests his feet on so that's what he's uh, showing to you my friend thank you thank you thanks guys thank you two 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 thank you you're the man, bro. You're the man. Remember, come to this guy. He has all the best stuff. Thank you. Thank you. I would buy more sandals, like for my kids, for my wife, but I just don't know their sizes. He does have, you know, kid sizes, females, males. It's a huge mix. I mean, a bag that's full. Each bag has a different product, and you can go shopping in there forever. One of my favorite experiences seeing that. Beautiful. Take care, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the market. Yeah. We are going to start from Picona Hotel and walk through the central market of Damali to the culture center. Is it big? It's big. <laughs> big and busy. It's always big and busy. <laughs> I love it. You cannot compare it with uh, Mokala in Accra or uh, KJTR in Kumasi. Yeah. yeah, obviously, small population, right? One million people here. Uh, down in, I think it's 2.2 .2 in Kumasi and 3 million in Accra, right? It slowly gets bigger and bigger. And this is the city. Right in front of us, we have a mosque at the very end. Over here, we have a lot of different vendors. We have food vendors, we have watch it, we have seamstresses. So this big city is more of a rural city, okay? You would think you're just in a huge town going through here, but it never ends. It expands and expands and expands. We've driven like four streets and I feel like nothing's changed. It's all the same. Now this part of town is alive. It's like a billion tuk-tuks. This is the city of tuk-tuks. I haven't seen this many in any other city in Ghana. The tuk-tuk remain the, the big taxi uh, or uh, means of transport within the city. And over here is the market? Yeah, it's part of the entire central uh, market. Wow, so many things. They have like farming equipment, they have yams, clothing, and here okay, is Picorna. Picorna restaurant and hotel. From here we walk. Unero Cosmos, yeah. Let's do this. National Vice President, Tour Guys Association of Ghana. I love your hat. I'm getting one. Look at me. I'm boiling. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, okay. Try to navigate through here. Too many tuk tuk people, motorcycles. Oh my god. A few items here, like the snail. Uh, we have the ground hornbill. We have crocodiles. Yeah, so basically uh, animal stuff, right? This is a porcupine, right? Yeah. Very, very wild. Over there, massive snails. Look at this snail. Oh, 
This is what I ate the other day. Yeah. The same thing, right? Huge. Incredible. Oh man, look at that. So basically he has a lot of wild animals. The snail, the hornbill, porcupine. He also has elephant skin, a little wild. Crocodile skin too. They use it for some uh, rituals. These colors are used for some rituals. Some of them are medicinal. Medicinal, but from a spiritual angle. Because for us, Africa, before we had the orthodox medicine that we have now, when you are sick, they go to a spiritualist. The spiritualist find out what caused your sickness and then what will heal you. So what will cause your sickness, what caused your sickness will be found, just like we do in the orthodox sickness, take you to the lab. Here they also spiritually check up. As you are sick, this is the cause and this is the remedy. So some of the remedies can be found here. This market is spread out all over the place, okay? So it's a little different from the ones that we saw in Kumasi and in Accra. Here, you have the yam section, you have over here some food, over there we have the medicine guy. So it's spread out throughout Tamale. That's where we're going, and this is called the Abuabu markets. We put it to be the new markets. There's the old market ahead, so we pass through that place too as well. But this is the new market, Abuabu markets. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Nah. Here we have some hats, traditional hats. Yeah. Amazing. The shiny head is covered. Oh, my shiny head's covered? Mm -hmm. Is it cool? <laughs> what do you think? It's a good color? Yeah, it is. It is. You like the Very color? Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Let me see the other colors. I don't know. I'm going to try this one on, guys. So it's a little tight. It's not so easy. But you have to like so, do it over like that, right? <laughs> I look good? I look good? I don't know. There's so many colors, like even this one's beautiful. So it's traditional here in Tamale, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's traditional. You won't find this anywhere else. I haven't seen any other hats in any other city. Yeah. Only in Tamale. Let me see. I like them all though. All the colors are beautiful, man. Green, red. This one's like white and blue, right? Really nice. It has a flower. I take it 20. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Yeah, thank you too. Thank you. <laughs> Our next vendor here has basically the same stuff. All medicine. Yes. Wow, look at this. Small crocodile. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Can I grab it? Is it okay if I see it? A crocodile. Whoa. And he has crocodile skins here. What else he have? He has the claw. This is wild. Over here. What is this? From what? Kajit. Uh, Watok. Warhog. Watok. The one you saw at the park. Uh huh. Yeah. The, the, so it's the warhog's like tusk, right? So most of the animals that you see here on the stand, some are dead naturally. Before they can pick this part or the other part to use it for rituals or for uh, medicinal purposes. So they're not going out hunting them for this. They just find them as roadkill, basically. And over here we have the tailors, right? These yes, guys yeah. are designers. They are, they are really designers. Uh, they get the strips and then they stitch them. Exactly. Into hats, smokes, cloths, and different, different kinds. For instance, like this. This is smokes? This one like this is oh. a, is a, is a trousers. Okay. You know about history? Yeah. And they also have hats here. They have a few different styles. They have one like mine, yeah. but they have one like yours too, yeah. Yeah. which is like a short hat. Mm -hmm. And then he's sewing, right? He's sewing all together. He's doing that. It's a short hat. Oh, wow. He's doing it right there? By hand? Yeah, by hand. By hand. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Every single shop here has hats, right? They all have beautiful hats. Wow. Look at this one. And this one goes over your whole head, this right? One is a, yeah, this one is yeah, similar. Yeah, so it's like that. Okay, so this is a style, huh? Yeah. This is like the style that's not going out of style. No, no, no. <laughs> this market's very different from the one at Accra and Kumasi. It's way more spread out, but now it's become more congested, right? Over here to the right and the left, we have a lot of different beans, a lot of fruits. So we have millet as well. We have beans, we have rice. All local rice. All local rice. Palm kernel and oranges. They are all not produced here. They've been brought from the south. Well, the kennel, that one, we've seen them make the butter. That's that. right. Yes. Yeah. A chicken market is where people come to shop for chicken, guinea fowl, uh, turkey, ducks, and so on. And it's a huge market for the people. See the guinea fowl? 
<laughs> We've eaten some before. We've eaten the guinea fowl. Yeah, I've tried it. That's right. This day. Pop. So a guinea fowl is a type of bird from the wild. It's uh, you were saying it's sweet and it's gamey. This is a chicken coop. If you want to transport a live chicken, you put it here. Okay, so walking through here, there's more chicken, more guinea fowl, and there's turkeys over here. Oh, a massive turkey. So many guinea fowl. I mean, I've never seen this many guinea fowl at a market before. I'm guessing there's a lot in the area, right? Plenty. Are we gonna eat that today with fufu? Guinea fowl and fufu? Probably. Too many guinea fowl. Look at this. And they're really scared. They're not like chickens. Chickens stay here. Ducks stay here. Guinea fowl fly. Oh, I need to cover my nose. Smells. So many. Poultry everywhere. My friend. Hey. All right, guys. I'm gonna try some papaya. Right? Good. It's one CD each. So. For a dollar, you get five of these, right? So you basically get an entire, entire papaya. Let's try it. Very crunchy. Yeah, I think it's not ripe yet. I think it's just like right there, about to be ripe. Usually it's soft when I eat it. It's a little hard. Mm -hmm. People are everywhere. Whoa, they're sewing right in front of us. Mm -hmm. Just left the market. More guinea fowl being boiled. What an insane array of smells, flavors. So we're going now is the meat market where they slaughter uh, sheep, goats, cow, and then they sell the meat. That's where we're going now. This is the butcher shop. We got 10 butchers, and every second some new client comes in and orders something. They have beef, I think they have lamb and goat as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so you order, they cut it up for you. Just be careful. When he's cutting, things are flying in the air. And I love the sound. <laughs> yeah, watch out, it, hits you, it can hit you in the eye. But I love the sound. It smells a little intense. Obviously, it's rotting carcasses here. You got legs, the ribs of the beef. You have over here uh, intestines. And the guy just keeps hacking down. This is one of the places that is kept a bit neat yeah. compared to some other which we have visited in some market. It's pretty clean. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty clean. Let's continue. This market is unique, very different. Yeah, yeah. Very different from Kumasi. Yeah. Kumasi, you can't even walk. Mm -hmm. This, a lot less people. I like this. Less people, nice. less crowds. Yeah. Plus, in COVID times, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of beans. This entire alley is beans. Just vendor after vendor, they're cleaning the beans. Again, we're ready to go out to the market for sale, right? Because right here is not the actual market. This is like wholesale, and then it'll be out to the vendors. And it's another unique shop. So this is the shea butter shop. And here they have shea butter. So you just grab a little bit, put on your skin, right? Right there. Moisturizer. Feels good. Very nice, my friends. So I thought this was a shea butter and that was it. No, every single one of these is shea butter. Look at this. So they have it in these plastic bags. They also have it wrapped over here. So much shea butter. Can I take a box? I mean, a whole thing? This is so unique. Never seen this before in my life. Shea butter factory here. They're packing it. He's packing it very uniquely. I mean, the bottom, is that the, so that's the calabash. So the bottom of the, the bowl is the calabash bowl with all the shea butter and then he packs it like, I don't even know how he packed that, but he did a unique job there. Yeah, I mean, you need to learn this for yeah, it's several a, days. Lots of skill here. Play. I mean, he's probably been doing this for like 30 yeah. years, you know? Whew, all right, let's continue. She's a great woman. She, she sells, she's one of the great women doing a shepherd. <laughs> she's too funny. So same thing, shea butter here. Yeah, shea butter. Shea butter. This is one of the shops and she's telling, telling me that I should let you know that that is her business. Since childhood, she learned it from her grandma to her mom, now to her and now her daughters and everybody is there doing it. And she's the shop owner here. And the whole shop is nothing but shea butter business. So you can turn back to her. She's the one selling shell butter here in Tamale. Come to her. She's really pushing her business. She's buying some? Yes. How much? He's spending 30 CDs, so like six US dollars, for a huge ball of shea butter. That's incredible. Dude, that's huge. Let me see. My auntie in Accra, she has been really worrying me anytime I'm going to the north. I say bring shea nut butter cream from the north. I cannot believe the price. You spent 30, right? Oh, it weighs so much. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Here there's like seven women pounding the fufu. 
Look at this. So here the ladies are making fufu. There's six ladies at one time pounding the fufu. And over here they have the modern version, which is basically just putting it into a machine and it comes out, right? They're also making a bunch of different soups. Over here's a light soup. This one has like a bunch of different organs, different things in it. What is it? Whoa. What's in there? Looks like tripe, like stomach, intestines. Looks really good. And I thought it was only one area. No, no, it's, it's like, it's never ending. Look how many. Just never ending pots. Everybody doing the same thing though, right? Similar stew. And they're making the fufu. Over there, they're, you know, cutting up some chicken. The guinea fowl stew. Mm. That would be so gamey. But why not, right? We're here. They eat guinea fowl here, right? Okay, so we saw how they make their traditional food, which is not like fufu, -fu, it's a little different, it's made from corn. That's what they were doing there. They also had fufu -fu on the side and they were pounding fufu. -fu. They always have both, right? It's fufu -fu and then whatever they have in, you know, the city, the state. Here they do one with corn. Let's keep going this way. Dude, there was way too much smoke in there, I couldn't see. Yeah, smoke, you right? Too much, too yeah, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Traffic jam. Yeah, traffic, traffic jam, yeah. <laughs> you eh? I know Gwanda. So this lady, she's a fruit vendor. A lot of pineapples, a lot of calabas, right? So this is it right here. Wow. Hey. I've never seen soap this big. Bah, okay, that's I know, but they haven't cut it. Yes, it's so it huge. Bar soap. So it has the lines to be cut, but I've never seen it like that in its original form. So we're back at the street, and I guess we're done. We're walking back to the hotel, Picorna. And there's our driver, Ben. And from here, we're gonna go to a warm place and then we're gonna go eat some fufu. He's the best guide ever. Tamala, you you oh. like you taught me so much. My man, my yes, man. Yes, thank you, yes, thank you. It's almost 1 p.m. and the crowds have come out. Before it was pretty dead. Now everybody's out walking the streets. It's packed. It takes time to start life and activities here. It's also not so hot in comparison to anywhere we work. Kumasi was boiling compared to this and it's not that dry. It's not so bad. Tamale Cultural Center where they have the, the arts galleries, the art shops where visitors come for shopping. But unfortunately it's very quiet now due to the fact that uh, Visitors, tourists are not coming anymore. Yeah, because of COVID, this place is pretty dead, but there still are a lot of vendors. We came here to find a few things. It's my last day of shopping, and this is it. Lots of vendors. Sylvia here has a mix of things, right? She has baskets, wood carvings. She has the map of Africa, the map of Ghana. Which they used to make dresses like this. Yeah and women also make the similar thing, but a bit longer. And then bracelets, you know, small little hippos, this is cool. Hippos, elephants, lions. So lots of wood carvings, but they also have baskets and they have leather work. Obviously we're in a city of the tannery, so lots of leather wallets. What I was looking for was a, a beer opener. She has this one which is like wood with the opener on top, but I, I saw one with brass that I was really interested in. Lots of good stuff here, my friend. This is too much. I would buy your whole shop, but I have no way to take it home. <laughs> oh, look for a big car. A big car? Yeah. I need a big plane. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So this is the shop. Adongo Artworks. Every shop is very similar, but some have different products. No way, you found it. And here they are, guys. So these are beer openers. I like these, but I don't really understand what it is. So it's like a turtle and a croc or something. <laughs> this one's cool. How much, my friend, for this one? 35. 20. 100. Okay. 100? Yeah, sure. I'm buying four bronze beer bottle openers. Really cool designs. His cousin makes it. He charges usually 35, but I'm buying four for 100. Nice deal, thank you for negotiating. And I'm done with the cultural center. It's a great place to go shopping. They have a lot of leather stuff. They have baskets, wood carvings, those bronze beer bottles I just opened. And now we're going right here to find some fufu. Another fufu. Yeah. My last one. No, maybe tomorrow you will get another Maybe, fufu. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we try to find a fufu place. But unfortunately right now, the one that's making it is taking a little time. So we're gonna head out, look for one near the airport. Have to fly to the airport. 
I'm taking off in about two and a half hours. So Isaac, is all Tamara like this? Is every single house is just one story? Because I don't see any like two or three story buildings. No, no. Uh, this is the, I mean the heart of the town. Like if you move to the outskirts, you begin to see those uh, story buildings spreading up. Uh, no, it's, in fact, Tamale is the most fastest growing city now in Ghana. No way. Yeah. So there's also like a CBD area, right? Oh, With yeah. towers and stuff? Yeah. Okay. And then, so this is just the old town where we are now. The real, the heart of the city, the beating heart, right? Yeah. Right here. And we're going straight towards the airport. You said 30 minutes, right? Yeah. Let's see if I can have some lunch around here. No one wants to have fufu. I mean, What's happening? We just saw mad people making fufu and now we can't see any serving fufu. We'll see. I'm sure we'll find one. There's like a billion fufu joints in Ghana. So we're about five minutes away from the airport. We stopped at this gas station to get some fuel and right here there's a chop bar. Let's see if they have fufu. If not, they might have some rice, some bitters. Oh, they have fufu. Yes, that's big. I guess it's good. I guess it's good. That okay. means how much? Thank you. It's a lot. Look at this. Fufu with uh, peanut soup and chicken. So every time you eat fufu, you gotta wash your hands. So they always have this, right? So, soap, some water. Does it work? Yeah, it works. Kill all those germs, bacteria. Done. So this is like a tiny chop bar next to the gas station. Right here, got the peanut sauce with some chicken, like that, right? Yeah. Just pour it all in, and the chicken. So what I got, chicken thigh, and the drumstick, right? And I asked me to get it on this trip. Mm -hmm. mm. All the peanut sauce. Mm. Oh, it's like delicious, man. It's, it's sweet, it's oily. Mm. Nothing better than the peanut. It's got to drench this. Mm -hmm. And right here, piece of chicken, right? This peanut also goes well with, uh, with rice ball. With the rice ball? Yeah. Yeah, because it absorbs it, right? Nice piece of chicken. Still really hot. The peanut soup is yeah. boiling. You gotta be careful. Ooh, too hot. The only way you can actually touch it is if you get the fufu like this and you just drench it. And this one is not different, right? It's the same as the ones we had before. In terms of corn, cassava. They explain to my viewers what fufu is. Fufu is pounded yam or pounded cassava mixed with plantain. Mm -hmm. Because we have different type of fufu. Okay. One from the yam, as one from cassava mixed with plantain. Or even mixed with cocoa yam. Okay. You boil the yam first, then you pound it in a mortar. Or you boil the cassava, uh, cocoa yam, plant it together, and then you uh, you pound it in a mortar. Okay. That's what we call fufu. And it goes with any soup. Every soup, Tomato basically. soup, peanut soup, pamela soup, mm -hmm. light soup, everything. And this one's delicious. I mean, it's so different, right? It's different. It's peanut soup is a um, specialty of the northern people. Yeah? yeah? And guys, if they give you too much, tell them to give you less. They give him like double. <laughs> The portion. <laughs> Peanut sauce. Oh man. Sweet, oily. I just I enjoy peanut sauce so much. Oh. You like uh, mixing it? I love mixing it. <laughs> just like take off a piece of chicken. Uh, it's still super hot though. It's like burning my hand. Chicken, got a little bit of fufu, get some of that delicious peanut sauce. Sorry I say delicious so much as that. There's no other better way to describe the sauce. All right guys, that is it for tamale. We explored basically the main things to see, right? The yeah. tannery, the market, and then the cultural, the cultural center. center. Those are the three things, right? So when you come here, head straight to the tannery, see them doing that. It takes like 10, 15 minutes. You see the whole process, how they, you know, get the skin, take off all the fur, dye it, and then eventually stretch it out and they make leather, right? And then after that, walk around the market. The market's a little different from the one in Accra, the one in Mina, the one in Kumasi. Everything's more spread out. Different types of vendors everywhere. Like you have a butcher area, you have the poultry area, you have an area where you can... uh, butter area. Mm -hmm. You have the fruits area, you have uh, uh, all the, the smoke sellers area. Village. 
who are making the smokes. Uh, the mm -hmm. smokes of my art and my interest. But since we went to the market, we have seen them also in the yeah. same area. Yeah. So you can buy some stuff from the guys making the leather. You can go through the entire market, buy anything you want there. Hat, the smokes, other yeah. goods. You know, he bought a bunch of Shia butter, a bunch for like six bucks, about a huge thing, crazy. Yeah. And then after that, we saw the cultural center. That's more of a touristic place where a few different vendors are selling craft goods. And then from there, straight to the airport, having a quick fufu right here with delicious sauce. Yeah, because we want to, mm. we don't want you to, to go with the plane empty as too much. No way, man, no way. At least. And and we're late. We're supposed to be there. We're supposed to be there 15 minutes ago, but we're right here. I'll be on time, well, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video of Tamale, the third largest city in Ghana. If you want to come, it's only a one-hour flight. If you're driving, it's a long one. I wouldn't drive. Few I would days. Fly. Few days. Few days. Oh my God. No, it's like 12 hours, something like that, right? Mm. You guys, if you love the video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe so my channel for more awesome travel content. And thank you, bro. I'm your climate-friendly travel guy. This is my brother from Ghana, man. Yeah. <laughs>